Hey guys, before the show starts, I wanted to remind you or let you guys know that I've made a Discord channel where I have a lot of different topics we can talk about. Um, we can have STM32 peripheral conversations where you can ask questions about any of the ST peripherals. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there's so much uh, more inside these chips, but we can always talk about anything. Um, I have a section on microcontrollers, STM32, and XP crossover microprocessors. Um, microcontrollers which i want to start giving courses on that too um you can have programming sections where we can talk about you know programming aspects stm cube hal and ll libraries rtos section with the azure threadx free rtos uh, micro cos and zephyr rtos you can ask questions about pcb design or have sanity checks on your own designs we can talk about fpgas He's a good friend of mine. His name is Embedded Ken. The guy is a genius when it comes to RTOS. I mean, I'm sorry, to FPGA. And then this section right here, I I, I really want to get this going. This is where we can post. Um, you can post your projects. I, as you can see, somebody here posted their um, SD card library. Um, I would like us to work together on projects, on open source projects. And once they get good um then we can go ahead and make a section for each project here so this is my first project it's a micro c shell which i'll make a separate video about that but it's an open source project that i have going on which is it's just an embedded console for embedded devices um so yeah so this is a section for community projects um so go ahead guys and i'll leave the, the link in the description below and join the channel uh the discord server i mean i just made it this week so uh go ahead and jump on that guys Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the first video on a series on FreeRTOS. Um, I will be using an STM32F446RE Nucleo for this. Um, you can use any sort of related device. Obviously, um, FreeRTOS works with just about every microcontroller. Um, but if you want to follow along, that I'm just telling you what I'm using. Um, so we'll go ahead and start a new, um, a, a clean application here. Um, obviously, I'm not going to type everything from scratch, but I will show you how everything works um, so we can uh, get the ball rolling quickly. So let's go ahead and start. Um, we'll start off by making a uh, brand new project on based on the uh, Nucleo that I just mentioned. And this, um, this tutorial is really aimed at teaching you how to... Uh, load up the files um from uh, the free rtos repo in github um as opposed to having the cube ide generate absolutely everything for you so it's really just about learning exactly what files from free rtos you need and what you don't need um to actually get an application up and going this is important because not everybody may be using an ide so if you're using a build system if your project is based off make files or, or bazel um, which a lot of projects are because IDEs are very friendly if you have just one project and that's it. But if you have multiple projects and they're all sharing the uh, a certain code base and you know what I mean, it's a lot more complicated things going on. You can't just press compile and run and everything works. Um, I, IDEs can rarely really handle that much. So that's when you have to start using build, build systems and whatnot. And that's when you really have to know, okay, what files do I need and what do I not need? And um, so that's what uh, I'm going to help you uh, figure out here. So let's go ahead and get the STM32F446RE. Yes. So this is the Nucleo that I'm using. So use a coming ne uh, naming convention here. Um, see, okay, that's fine. Next, uh, that's fine too. So these are the bullet points. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well, we can cross this out because we're about to finish doing this, and it's just uh, generating our uh, main cube project here. I'll start off by uh, enabling my um, external oscillator and configuring that here. I know it's eight megahertz. Uh, High speed external phase locked loop and we'll let the cube figure out all the dividers and prescalers for us okay that's fine uh the next order of business is that i want to change the time base that st hal will use by default it uses the cystic timer but free rtos also uses the cystic timer 
excuse me um by default so what we're going to do is just um instead of messing around with the source files on our free our task we'll go ahead and just change it here it makes no difference uh you can choose any timer you want four five six whatever it doesn't matter um, so that's done and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the UART because I know that on UART 2 of the Nucleo it's connected to my um, ST link and I can print messages through there. Um, all the default settings are just fine and lastly I know I have an LED on pin A5 so I'll set that to be an output. Perfect. Um, yep and that's it and like I said you can actually have the ID generate uh, the free our toss files for you and you can configure everything here but um, I will make a tutorial on that that's fine I have nothing against that but I think it's also important that you know how to load up the files uh, yourself so we'll go ahead and generate the code and that covers that so now we're gonna get into this next bullet point which is a uh, main application and all this means is that I'm going to clean this up here. I don't like writing code in this uh, messy looking thing where you can see I can I can write here, but I can't write here. Um, I don't. I just it just looks awful to trying to dance around where you want to write your code and where you're not allowed to write your code. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to click on the uh, free toss um, on the name of my project here, and we can right click and we can write new folder and I'll just call it that I'll call it main app oops main app and uh I'll go to the folder that I just made main app and I'll right click and I'll make new folder and I'm going to make one for my include files and I'll make one for my source files so I made one for include right click um, again make another folder and we'll call this source okay so now inside the include file, I want to right click and I will make a file and we'll call it main app.h. And we'll do the same thing with the source file. We'll make a new file and we'll call it main app.c. Oops. Main app.c. Main app.c will include main app.h. Let me just uh, split the view here. And. Um, We'll save that and we'll add some uh, header guards here. This is a common convention here. So you can really just call it whatever you want as long as you only make this define once. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and make a uh, main app entry here. Okay, so this is my main app entry. Um, gonna and then what we'll do is from main app. I mean from main C, the original dirty, ugly looking main C, we'll call um we'll call what is oh no we'll include first uh our main oops main app dot h, and then somewhere in main after everything's initialized right before the while loop. We'll go ahead and call uh, main app. Oops. And uh, in reality, this should uh, this should never. Oops. This should never uh, return because this main app has its own infinite while loop. Um, okay. The other thing we have to do is that even though we've made these folders, main app and include all, and all this stuff. Um, the ID doesn't really know to search there for includes or source files. So we're going to go ahead and, and right click on our project name. We'll go to properties. We'll go to um, C, C++ general. And then under, we'll expand that and we'll go to path and symbols. Uh, let me make this a little bigger. Under paths and symbols, you, you'll see these tabs up here. Uh, we can go ahead and click on include. 
um, and we will add our include folder. So we'll click on workspace path because this path is within our workspace and then we'll click this workspace button and we'll navigate to our include folder that is in our main app main folder. So main app include don't uh, don't click on the actual header you want to click on the entire directory. So include directory we'll press OK um, and then we'll go to the source location and tab up here and we'll do the same thing we'll point it to our uh, main app and then the source folder okay apply apply and close and if we can save everything save all okay yep I've already pressed save we should be able to build and compile with no errors zero errors zero warnings okay so that handles the sort of uh, main app uh, clean looking files and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to open these files in an instance of uh, VS code just because it looks um, it's just it's nicer to look at um, I actually have a here so all I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to these files and just um, open that up um, and I do this just because it's less busier so when I'm typing code you guys can just look at the code and not have to worry about all these other windows and it's just it's I don't know it's just nicer to look at so uh, I think this is in my F drive YouTube workspace sim to Fiartas and okay there it is okay so now yes trust the authors all right so now here's VS code and it's open to, to this right here um, so there's no difference between these files or anything. So I, I just opened that folder. Um, okay, so we'll go to main app and we'll go to source uh, main app that C and uh, our include has main app that H and there it is. Okay, so we have these two uh, files that we're going to work with uh, mostly here. Um, so now we're going to do this bullet point and after this I'll cut the video because <laughs> my original video of, of this stuff was 47 minutes long and I'm like people don't want to sit there for 47 minutes. Um, you kind of want to do it in digestible chunks, right? <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just going to implement a sort of print, a print, a print and blink functions so we can test that we actually get to these parts of, of the code. Um, so first I'll give you guys the print function which is a function that I have made a video on. And interestingly enough, enough, I no longer recommend this for embedded systems because it's a huge function. Um, we can cut this down to size so that we can use less space. Um, but yeah, don't use this function anymore, guys. It's, it's, it's huge, huge, and just don't. Um, because you have to include standard io.h, uh, you have to include um come on cube i mean id thing um you have to include um oops standard arg correct and i believe string.h oh yep string.h okay um i have to do that in order for this to work and let's go back to the IDE here, Let's see if it builds fine. Uh, you start string. Okay, I have to include um, in my main app.h, I have to include main.h so that I can um, have access to all the cube and peripherals and stuff. Now, the good thing is that once we get to the point where we clone and clean free our toss, you're going to see a lot of errors and stuff pop up. And that's the whole point. I'm going to show you what everything means and how you fix it. And it's not really, um, it's, it's nothing out of this world. Um, it's really easy actually. So let's save this, save that. It should build fine for now. Okie dokie. So now we'll go ahead and build. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the uh, little blink, f uh, blink function. Again, a lot of this stuff I've already typed up because I wasn't gonna sit here and uh, really type absolutely all of it from scratch because just unnecessary. 
Okay, so now we're gonna test that we actually get there. So let's go into this while loop and let's do print message. Um, hello. Uh, let's just type in I don't know percent D and uh, counter plus plus. Okay, let's make a counter. Um, should work, right? That's what everybody says. Um, uh, okay, so this should be fine. Uh, project. And interestingly enough, I'm here. I am typing here, and I was going to type in the other thing. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, we got to do our build configurations first, or debug config configuration so we'll click on stm32 project um here's our project we'll go to debugger we're using st link i like to make sure it finds it yep it does and we'll press apply and debug i have this terminal here um let's wait for this thing to pop up okay and there I am at the beginning of that. Where is that terminal? Let me open up show view, show terminal. Okay. This terminal, if you don't have this, you can just go um you can go to Eclipse Marketplace there and you type in terminal and it should be the first one that pops up. You can right click on this or how do you configure this thing? Oh, what am I doing here? Uh terminal. How do I configure the job oh, that you click over here? Com three. I'm not even sure if that's my actual com. Let's see if it is a com three. ST com three. It is. Okay. And these are the default settings and we're okay. So now let's go, go ahead and press run. And there it is. Hello with an increment encounter. Um, all right. So that pretty much uh, takes care of this right here and i'll just leave you guys right there and in the next video uh we'll do the rest of these steps where we will clone free our tosh from its repo and on github we'll clean it up i'll show you what we mean by that and then we'll make some tasks and um and that that'll be the basic um the boilerplate for the rest of the tutorials because i feel like if i start teaching you the complexities and how to how free our tosh works and this and that and you haven't even seen a single task run, you might be uh, disheartened or, or bored rather. Um, it's really not difficult at all to use uh, FreeRTOS, but that's why I want to get the tasks up and going so we can uh, see some some actual, you know, RTOS stuff going on. Okay guys, stay tuned for the next video. Um, thanks, and do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.